goddess and welcome to this video. I'm Abiola, the founder of womanifesting.com and the goddess of Paris miracles and manifesting retreats in the summer of 2019. I am here to share with you the gifts, the talents, the stories of Lightworker Doris, who will be bringing her power, really power, mm -hmm to the retreat. Welcome, Lightworker Doris. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I am happy to be with you today. I'm happy to share um, about all the lights and all the powers that uh, we, will, we will be witnessing together. And I'm ready to answer all your questions. Yes. <laughs> well, in the other two videos in this series, Lightworker Doris shared about auras, and about sound healing so be sure to catch those videos and come play with us in paris in this segment we're going to be talking about hypnotherapy which i am so thrilled that is a part of her practice because it's something that i'm currently studying something that has been transformational in my life and i look forward to in the future being able to bring that to you. And so Lightworker Doris, before we begin, you shared a bit that in one of the past segments that your family is a family of healers. And I would love to hear more about that, please. Okay. Um, as you were mentioning this, something came to my mind uh, because you asked me earlier, how did you you know, were you gifted uh, as you were born, or did it did it come later? And and I remember that my sister used to do uh, predictive dreams, and uh, and my mom was always saying that you know my sister was was gifted and gifted. And something in me, I was thinking, it's not fair. I don't have that, or I wish I I wish I did. Um, but I really thought that I did not, and. Um, up until the door opened for me and and you know there was no turning back and it went extremely fast um i i went from being a let's say a powerful businesswoman running activities in india to um uh, almost putting everything aside and becoming a healer and within and it, life led me to becoming a teacher in less than two years of practice which which was surprising to me because I already I was thinking, how can I self-proclaim myself a healer when you know I was a business person and here I am providing healing for people, uh, finding my life purpose. By the way, there was no questioning that, and I loved it. But I was thinking, you know, if people start questioning me on my background, they might be surprised and they might find that weird. And and then boom, after I had meditated what three times in my life, I am put in a situation where I have to lead sound healing meditations. And I just created it. And in less than three months, I was a meditation teacher. And now with when I look back, it all makes sense. And it was it was normal and it was the way to be. And and um and it was always in me. I, I have that master healing um and teaching um as as part of my activated um energies and, and DNA now but at that time it was it seemed crazy but whether I liked it or not I was being put on that path and I had to surrender and trust and um, and yeah it's been six years thank you so much for sharing that because one of the programs that, that I have is an online program called spiritpreneur guru Academy that helps healers and coaches and spiritual teachers to be able to empower answer their calling and create a, a business around their calling. And one of the first challenges that everyone has is exactly what you said, saying, you know, well, who am I to, who am I to step up and say this or do this? Or what will people think? You know, what will, what will, what will my family think? Or what will my, you know, significant other, my partner, what will my partner think? People will think I'm suddenly weird, you know, or how dare, how people will say, who does she think she is? Mm -hmm. And so I think that it's wonderful that you share that 
because people will look at you and see a powerful healer like you and say, oh, well, it's easy for her. It's always been easy for her. So, you know, thank you for sharing that because very rarely do, you know, established healers talk about that. I'll tell you two more things. Uh, the first one is, um, I think the, the person that I was scared the most of in terms of opinion was my father. And, and the day I became so empowered by myself, by finding who I was, um, a lot of things changed. And it was very interesting because it's only when I changed my LinkedIn account, my professional account, that I thought all my social crowd from business school, because I have a business background, and I was thinking they're gonna think that you know I stayed too long in India and that I went, I became so and so. And you know how it felt? I mean, I don't know what it is to to, to be a, a gay person, but I felt I was doing a coming out. It that is I was, coming out. That's exactly I was, what I call it. You did come out. It is a coming out. And I was revealing to the world who I truly was. And I was closeted before, but I didn't know. And doing that was was very, very powerful. And the day I stepped up, um, even the way people would respond to me changed because I had tapped into this self-respect and self-love and self-appreciation for my true self. So that was that was a very, very powerful thing to do for me. That is a very powerful thing. And that's exactly what it is. I call it coming out of the spiritual closet. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> let's jump in and talk about hypnotherapy. So first of all, for our viewers, what is hypnotherapy? Um, where to start? It is such a vast subject. Hypnotherapy is, okay, um, uh, you know what? I'm going to take this. Okay, can you see those balls? Yes. yes. All right. So let's let's say that these are two pools or this is your two brains, okay? But right now, what you've been experiencing is only this one, okay? You can see yourself, haha, <laughs> magic, you can see yourself in, in it. So when you do hypnotherapy is that we are starting to bring forward the second brain of yours, the second memory of yours that you didn't know existed. So this is your intellect. This is your rational thinking. This is you and me right now as we are talking. You know, maybe a, a part of this is active, but mainly this one is active. So normally you are like this, and when we do hypnotherapy, it becomes this. Why I insist on those two at the same time is because when one does a session, um, there's no lack of control. There's no loss of control, but you are able. Your intellect is able to witness your subconscious mind at work okay so instead of this one being forward it is now stepping back and it's coming like this and it's observing the one on top here is observing what this one is revealing we are tapping into your deepest mind and your intellect has nothing to do nothing to say is just witnessing and we want that to happen so that you remember where you're coming from and you remember your transformation Ah, I, I, I think that that explanation was really um, helpful for many people because there are actually people who are afraid of hypnotherapy. My mother, who you know is a somewhat open person, when I told her that you were bringing also your gift of hypnotherapy, and I had spoken to her about, you know she knew that I had been studying and doing hypnotherapy and she was very, it made her afraid that, the, you know, I remember when I had spoken to her after my first hypnotherapy session and when I told her about you and, and she may be coming to the retreat and she said, well, I, 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 you know, she was she was nervous, like somehow you were going to take her and she would be out of control. And she said, well, I don't want to, you know, bark like a chicken or, you know, that was her, her, her thought of it. Can you speak to that a bit? Yeah, yeah. It's it's the first thing that people and, and it is what's stopping people. Um, it's a very funny aspect of the of the human because we we feel we think that we are in control and deep inside. We want to let go of control. So there is this apprehension and people think that hypnotherapy is like 
show you know you snap your fingers and you're you're out and you're completely unaware of what you're doing and you and we make you do crazy things and by the way even though people are extremely scared of it there is always a little portion of them that wish they could do it because it is the most difficult thing for a human being to let go completely but it is a very powerful thing but coming back to hypnotherapy itself, no, it's a process where you are being put into a very deep, relaxed state through focus. So there are techniques, there are ways to make a person so focused and put them into a resistance mode so that when, when you make it stop, the person will drop you know, all resistance, they'll go into the flight mode, and their mind is actually going to um uh almost like jump out of their body and and be in a state of a light trance and of course you have to understand it's a process the first time because fear because you have let's say as a human being you have never experienced hypnotherapy so as humans we do not like what we don't know okay you don't know yet if it's something that's going to be good for you or if it's going to be painful and because of that, you're going to say, okay, I'm going, but I'm tiptoeing and I'm staying by the door because if this doesn't go where I want to go, I'm out. So on the first session, you're full of resistance and you go in and people will have a very deep experience, but there's always that element of, mm, um, uh, again, was it me? Was it? And it's only when they will feel the effect of the session unfold in the coming days that they'll be like wow okay i need to go back i want to go back i want to go deeper and then on the second session they drop down let's say they double they double the depth of, of where they go and the deeper you go the more you access the more you access um the root cause of what what you're experiencing or, or what's what's bothering you or what's troubling you and then you will go to extent of connecting with your spirit guides, going into past life regressions, going, connecting with angels, opening your gifts, tapping into other realms, channeling. Uh, you're going to, people would receive wisdom, messages from sometimes their diseased and loved ones. Um, it's endless. The possibilities of where one can go, it's, you know, it's as many human beings there are there on Earth, multiply by the number of realms, and this is your infinite possibilities of, of where a session can take you. Um, but one thing I would say is that it's always for your highest and best. Um, yes, sometimes you clear a few, you know, heavy emotions, but it, it never stays to obsess because that's what also people are scared is, is you know, they'll be in trouble for 25 years because they've put everything away and they're scared that if they open that door it's going to haunt them again yeah. and that fear of of facing what has hurt so much in the past um makes it last even longer but if they knew that you just open up to throw it away and it lasts five minutes and yes you might have a few tears and then it's gone forever oh the liberation the freedom this is this is what is the most important in hypnotherapy is emotional freedom liberation um of anything any trauma any emotion that you don't even uh, maybe know that you have so that that's how powerful it gets it is liberation it absolutely is and uh, that is why i felt drawn to after it being so powerful for me you know it, it's literally like almost like you know being able to open the doors within you and pick out you know the different things that mm -hmm. are blocking you and holding you back and at the goddess of paris retreat the women will have the opportunity to book directly with you one-on-one -on -one hypnotherapy sessions which i think every single person if you can please take advantage of and you can even they can book with you in person and they can book with you and be able to work with you when they get back home uh, via Skype as well. And so what are the reasons why somebody should book with you? If they say, well, I'm already going to experience 
uh, light worker Doris in her healing circle, in the sound healing circle, um, you know, or her aura reading, why should I now book the hypnotherapy session with her? Uh, the first answer that's coming uh, to me is that it is one of the most empowering technique that I've ever met. When, when you are doing sound healing or aura reading, it is the therapist who is doing the work. In hypnotherapy, you are the master healer. You are opening the door. You know, it's, it's, you're coming with a serving plate full of what's troubling you and you are dissecting it and you are healing it and you're liberating it. And I am just the guide, you know, into the maze of your mind. But what we are going to find in there is what the person will encounter. And they will free themselves and they will realize that no one else could do that. And it will be so specific and it will be um, so, the, uh, sorry, I'm just having an example come to my mind is I have people from all age, all culture, uh, uh, cultures, all religious background. And, uh, you know, sometimes people, I, I remember of a lady who was 60, 65 and, and she did a session and she, she cried a lot because one of the memory came about um, a, a small incident that happened when she was nine years old with her mother. And she felt that her mother didn't love her or didn't love her to the extent of, you know, how she wanted to be loved. And at the age of 60, 65, she realized that she was still affected by how she felt the lack of love from her mother. And this is what, this is what comes through. And, and I could not, yes, okay, I can do an aura reading and say there are unresolved uh, issues going on between you and your mother or the feminine energy needs to be worked, you know, balancing the feminine, the masculine, it can come in many ways and it can be cleared. But it's very important to understand that if a person has a belief, then that energy, because a belief, because a thought is energy, if that belief is not changed, then the person is going to recreate that energy within them over and over again. So hypnotherapy is an empowering technique. And if you, it's a gymnastic that will help you in your meditation. It will teach you how to ask questions, how to receive answers. And it opens doors to, to deeper level of your subconscious mind, which makes also meditation a much easier exercise. So that's another positive aspect of hypnotherapy. It, it really does. And I've had, you know, experiences similar to uh, the older lady that you referenced, you know, where things like a, t a, t a birthday party when I was 10 years old that I had no idea was still affecting me and my idea of myself in this world and what my parents mm -hmm. thought of me and all of those things. I had no idea until, you know, working with a hypnotherapist to uncover that. And because our focus at the retreat is manifesting your miracles one of the reasons why you know someone will say to me well i've been doing everything and my manifestations are not working and the number one reason is that our if we have beliefs that are directly contrary to whatever it is we're trying to call in if you're trying to call in love and you have beliefs that you know based in rooted in experiences that you had, you know, where you created a story that you were unlovable or you didn't deserve to be loved or love only looks this way or that you don't deserve money or people with money are evil. If you have those deep rooted beliefs mm -hmm. that you're anchored into, then everything else that you're layering on top of it is, you know, that's all just surface. And so that's what makes hypnotherapy such a powerful practice. Yeah. And it, it's going to the places of what you think is unawareness. And, and to my surprise, and what, what was the most amazing and powerful aspect is also the past life connections, the karmic baggage. Yes. Is that you will find sometimes in your present life blockages that you can't even find within this life. So that opens up, you know, the number of dimensions and the levels of to what extent uh, one one needs to one needs to work. Um, I'm just having. Uh, I want to to make a, a comment here is that if anyone who is interested in coming to the retreat has some questions because hypnotherapy is a very vast 
uh, subject. If there are questions, I will be happy to answer, to write emails. Um, so if, if anyone wants to, to contact me as well, or if you want to forward some messages and questions, Abiola, I'll be happy to, to answer that, to, to make everyone at ease. That's great. Thank you so much for, for volunteering that because I think that that will absolutely help. And I want people when they're at the retreat to take advantage of all of the gifts that are there. You are there. And so when again will they be in Chantilly? Well, let me let me learn to say it properly. Shanti. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and get to work directly one-on-one -on -one with Lightworker Doris. So this is wonderful. Thank you so much, my sister. I, I feel like, oh, Oh, let's start the retreat tomorrow, but all in divine timing. I will see you in July 2019 in a couple of months. Thank you so much. For thank you. Thank you, Abiola. And thank you to the lovely ladies who are going to share this moment with us. Thank you. Yes, yes. And to the lovely ladies who are going to share this moment with us, go to goddessofparis.com, goddessofparis.com. Feel free to contact me with any questions or if you have questions for Lightworker Doris, any questions at all, no question is too small. The You can email me at the easiest one is business at abiolaabrams.com, business at abiolaabrams.com and goddessofparis.com to sign up and come play with us in a fairy tale castle in France. Let's do it. <laughs> Yay! I, look forward. I really look forward to seeing everyone. I do too. I do too. All right, goddesses, thank you so much for joining us today. I look forward to hugging you and seeing you in person. Be seen, be heard, be an amazing movement. Namaste, goddesses. Namaste. Namaste.